Okay, one little complication to this is uh, internal reflection. So here's our same sort of diagram. We've got light coming from the air into the glass. Um, and we can go any angle around here and the light will always go into the glass. The angle of refraction is always less than the angle of incidence. Okay, but what you'll notice is we come around here, the angle of refraction is more than the angle of incidence. This is because the light's speeding up as it leaves the block. And if we go around here, the angle gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until we get to this point. And at this point, the light is internally reflected. It can't refract when at any bigger angle. So we just end up with reflection where all of the light is internally reflected. So it stays inside the glass. We always get some internal reflection. Okay, but in this diagram, all of the light is internally reflected. If we go any angle bigger than that, we get total internal reflection okay this is quite useful in the world okay because we use this in optic fibers optic fibers are used for um, communication i'm sure you've heard of optic fiber uh, broadband on the internet also used medically in endoscopes um, it relies on light going into a fiber you'll notice a key part here is that the light refracts as it goes in but after that as long as this angle is big enough all the light will be reflected and reflected and reflected and it, until it comes out the far end of the fibre where it gets refracted again as it speeds up it blends away from the normal. Okay, just one uh, last little higher piece. We need to be able to actually think about how big that angle is and we give that angle a name, it's called a critical angle. Okay, and this is the minimum angle of incidence where the light is totally internally reflecting. So. That gives us an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. We can clear this up again with this diagram. So there goes the beam. Okay, it's refracted at 90 degrees. If this angle gets any bigger, all of the light will be reflected. If this angle gets any smaller, the light will be refracted. So the question is, how does the size of this angle relate to the material that the block's made out of, specifically its refractive index? Okay, well, we'll remember the equations that we've got. We've got sine i over sine r equals 1 over n. Okay, but in this diagram, the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle. And the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees, the biggest it could possibly be. And that equals 1 over n because the light is going from the glass into the air. So we're expecting it to speed up. We're expecting angle r to be bigger than angle i. Okay, so if we apply that equation to this diagram what we find is that i is c r is 90 so sine i becomes sine c sine r becomes sine 90 that's still equal to 1 over n okay but sine 90 we know is 1 so the sine 90 here disappears it's sine c over 1 it's just sine c that's 1 over n okay so this equation relates the refractive index of the material to the critical angle little example just to check so a uh, diamond has a refractive index a very high refractive index of 2.4 what's the critical angle for diamond well sine c is 1 over n that's 1 over 2.4 just stick that in your calculator you get 0 0.417 so that means the critical angle is the inverse sine of 0 0.417 that's 24.6 degrees okay that's a very small critical angle it means the light coming even from somewhere around there will be internally reflected. That's actually what makes diamonds so sparkly.